Christmas is an enchanting and meaningful holiday. And what I cherish most about the season is spending time with family and friends. Hi, Hi. good. I'm so glad to see you. Um, Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Come on in. I brought you some champagne. Oh my gosh, we can drink this while we make cookies. Okay, that's the plan. Come on in. Oh, it looks beautiful. Oh, we've been decorating and decorating. Wow, I can see Trying that. to get the house all ready. So I like to really do up the whole house, as you know. I love it. And what are these? These are Those cool. are the giant allium seed pods from the allium flowers that grew in my garden. And, and what did you do with them? Well, I let them dry. And I, they looked so good in the garden. I cut them all and I said, I, I'll save them for something. And Only I thought, you would think to save yeah, them for something. Maybe 4th of July, but mm -hmm. look how great they look for Christmas. They really do. This is a gorgeous tree. What are you going to do on your tree this year? Probably the same thing we always do. It's all ornaments that I made and had as a kid. And then every year we add a new one. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. that's but nice. I feel like I should do a themed tree like this. You could have more than one tree. I think we could. I've never done it, but I think I think we could. We're going to make cookies now. I think we I think we should get going because I don't want you to leave before you get a box of cookies. No, no, no. no. Let's go. Okay. So we're making golden bow cookies. Do you think I drink champagne every time I make cookies? <laughs> well, thank you for bringing you this. I've never had champagne with you before. I thought no. you should see what you're like a little oh, bit. Good. A little bit silly there. To you. Cheers. And to you and to a wonderful Christmas with your family. And to our cookies. Yes. So we need um, two teaspoons of lemon zest. And you're doing a great job. And I'm going to clean the butter. Have the butter, one cup of it, um, room temperature. Uh, not to be, you know, I think I have a disproportionate amount of work over here. No, no, no. I have, I have so much to do here. Mm, okay, let's like see. Like scraping the butter into the bowl. You know what you always do, Martha, that I never remember to do is have your butter out at room temperature. No, because it takes a long time to soften it, right? A long time. Add a little bit of cream cheese. Now, Jennifer is just the most inquisitive person in the kitchen. <laughs> well, wouldn't anybody be if they got you alone in the kitchen? I, well, I quiz you the whole time I'm here. So I add a cup of sugar to the three ounces of cream cheese and one cup of butter. I've never used one of these. Oh, no, yeah, and you're All right, I'll straight. tell you what I think. Jennifer great. is a very athletic person, so isn't it great? And you don't waste any lemon that yeah. way. Can I start adding? Okay, well, wait, no, I have to add the eggs. And, oh, you can add the uh, sift the dry ingredients. So, oh, got it. Yeah, One have, teaspoon of baking powder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Right. Perfect. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. One. Do you want the zest now? Yeah, I'll add that, too. You can just dump that whole thing in. When the flour is added, it all comes together. Let me just scrape down once. I always have yeah. to stop and scrape. Yeah, but that's important. And it always... While you're stopped, should I give a little... Yeah, a little here. You can use this to... You can use your fingers if right. you want. Okay. And they're clean. You want to incorporate it all, but you don't want to overbeat it. Like that. Okay, now you can add a little more. So there we have the batter. It is uh, really a nice thick batter, and we're going to put this into a. I know. Don't, are you bad like I am? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a little taste. Big fights over this spatula. No, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. hold on. So I now, make every year from the Martha Stewart cookies. I do a big basket full of um, different kinds of cookies for Christmas for people. Oh, well, that's nice. And this looks like a perfect one to it add is. to. And, and we're going to make enough to fill the most beautiful box. But we have to make the cookies first. Okay. Okay, so next step is piping the cookies. We pipe them? Yeah. I've never piped. Oh, you haven't? I'm not oh. a piper. Okay, well, good. I'm a spooner. Jennifer Garner pipes. <laughs> that's too big. Well, I'm a... I was born in Texas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is no excuse. Now, don't even waste it. Don't even don't, waste it. Uh, no, because that's, look, that will not look pretty and plump. See, look. Time, uh, I know. So see. do it again right okay. here. Okay. You can scrape it up. Now, wa watch what I'm doing. You're strong enough. You're way stronger than I am, I am sure, because you work out like, yes. Okay. Like ready. crazy. So I always use one hand. One hand. And I at the top of the bag to squeeze it out, mm -hmm. and then I direct with this hand. Mm -hmm. And so I want to just make a nice little figure eight. I'm squeezing evenly. Look, you're doing it. I'm directing. Okay, and then you put your mm -hmm. little bows, bow ties on the bottom. See, mm -hmm. like that. Yes. 
Yep. Very cute. Mm -hmm. Fun, right? Mm -hmm. Really fun. My sisters and I love to bake all of us. And How many sisters? Two. And I would have apple, another sister would have pumpkin, and the other sister would have pecan pies. And every year it was a big plan in the kitchen. And still, my favorite thing is to be in the kitchen with my sisters. So you're doing better. Mm-hmm. Much better, yes. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. I feel pretty legitimately that's, happy yep, with that, That's dude. exactly good. Right. So one bag makes six cookies. Ideally. Mm-hmm. Well. But if it doesn't, don't feel bad about yourself. No. Mm-hmm. Perfect. It looks like a little man's eyeglasses and mustache. <laughs> and so now we bake the cookies. I'm gonna bake even that one. <laughs> that one will be for me. Okay. 375, 12 minutes. Now, gilding. Gilding. Is this the Martha Stewart glitter? This is, no. <laughs> This is edible gold leaf, oh. and it's in the powdered form. And I find that it really works very, very nicely, and especially with a brush. You can use a little strainer, yeah. but but this gets it right into the nooks and crannies. Now I see why you need the ridges. And just a little bit. So they're pretty, don't you think? <clears throat> they are gorgeous. See how pretty they just mm -hmm. shine. You're already done. Mm -hmm. You're almost done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look how pretty they look. Nice stacked on really each other, do. too. I really love them. Good? Really good. Mm -hmm. Want to bring your champagne? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. You better bring the bottle, Marcel. Oh, okay. We're going to craft. Here we go. Okay. But I thought I would just show you the basic ingredients that anybody who likes to bake should have on hand. Start, of course, with flour. All-purpose, unbleached flour is really great to have. I store all my flours in large mouth glass jars like this. These canisters are nice. They're easy to find. I have them up on a shelf. And it also... To have a big, wide mouth like this makes it very easy to dip and measure. This is a great way to store flour. Sugar, too, is kept in clear glass jars. Again, easy dipping the cup measure right into the jar. And butter, lots and lots of butter for baking at the holidays. I just buy a lot of unsalted butter and I put it in the freezer and I use it as needed. But having it in the freezer is a great way to keep unsalted butter. And why unsalted? Because I can add salt uh, to taste. Nuts kept in uh, airtight containers like this, pecans, walnuts, should all be stored at room temperature in a cool, dark place. Good chocolates, white chocolate, milk chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate. You should have all those different chocolates on hand. I have a drawer in my kitchen that's marked chocolate and we keep all the chocolate right there at room temperature where it stays well wrapped and ready to use. Spices, you know, people get spices and they say, oh, that will last me for years. Well, spices do lose their strength and you should check every now and then uh, that the spices are fresh enough. Uh, nutmegs can be kept in a, a little tin like this with a tight fitting cover and all kinds of spices. You need ground cinnamon, ground ginger, this is cinnamon sticks, uh, ground uh, cloves, very pungent and powerful, and cream of tartar for um, baking projects. Uh, these are all the kind of Christmassy spices, I call them, that you should have uh, fresh and plentiful in your pantry. Of course, fresh baking powders. Baking powder, too, has an expiration date. Don't think that you can just keep the same old baking powder year after year. You cannot. In fact, whenever I start a big baking project uh, that calls for a lot of baking powder, I open a fresh can. And so once you're stocked up, you can then enjoy the baking process. And you can make gorgeous coffee cakes like this cake or cranberry tarts. With me today is Danny Fiore, who's worked with me on cake decorating, cookie decorating, and cupcake decorating uh, for a long, long time. Uh, welcome to Thank our you. countdown to Christmas. Thank you. I'm very now, excited. These are the cutest cupcakes. Oh my gosh, they're so and, cute. And uh, they incorporate not only a cupcake, but also an ice cream cone, yes. a sugar cone, my favorite. A sugar cone. My favorite. Which makes up the tree. A cupcake. And We're using some coconut snow. A star topper, right? And a star, I always add a cookie at the end. Okay, so let's do the process right away, Danny B. Okay, so we're gonna take a cupcake and we're gonna ice it with some cream cheese frosting. Okay, nice and delicious. Delicious. So I'm just gonna dip it in some coconut and this looks like snow. It just sticks really nicely. 
So we have our cream cheese icing, which we dyed green using food coloring. And we're just gonna start with a cone. And we used a microplane to just make a hole at the top. And I'll show you at the end what we're gonna do with that. But just add a little bit of icing right to the edge. And that's so this can stick nicely oh, into our cupcake. Into the coconut. Yes. Okay. And what we're gonna do is just put, we have a star tip on here and we're just gonna pipe stars all around. Make sure you get close together because you don't want to see the cone sticking through. No way. Oh my gosh, yours look great. You're an expert at this, at the piping. So we're After just doing thousands of wedding cakes with Absolutely. piping bags, I should be um, somewhat of an expert. But uh, these are so cute. Mm, so these are, and then you have to chill this, right? Definitely, yeah, get yes. That, get that nice and, the frosting nice and stiff. That's very and this cute. this would be such an adorable centerpiece for and your dessert buffet. It would be indeed. And then stick the little gingerbread topper right so in. So cute. That is a very sweet idea. And Beautiful. I think it's charming. So cute. And I love the little red papers too for the, for the cupcakes. The candy cane papers are adorable. Very cute. And on pedestals like this, you can make a really pretty display of this little Christmas tree forest. And they are so delicious. Yeah. Kids are gonna go nuts over these, Definitely. Danny. This is so delicious that they'll think it's spiked. Served with a very festive ice ring in the punch bowl. Slice five oranges into eighth of an inch slices. And also two lemons. Now, once you do all your slicing in your mold, start with cranberries first, about almost two cups of cranberries, and then layer your fruit, alternating oranges with the lemons. This is called shingling when you do these overlapping layers. This will take, oh, at least a day to freeze really solid, so don't leave this till the last minute to create. So there, you have it all pretty. Just add your cranberry juice, about three cups of cranberry juice, and enough water to come almost to the top of your mold. Oh, I forgot. Rosemary. Rosemary is so pretty in here. It will add a little scent and flavor to your punch. And that goes right into your freezer at least for 24 hours. So here is our beautiful ice ring. Pretty like that. It's also very pretty in the punch bowl. Now add your freshly squeezed orange juice or tangerine juice, pomegranate juice, and cranberry juice, and then ginger ale. The recipes are on MarthaStewart.com. Now look how that fizzes up. So it's almost like a champagne punch. Don't add the ginger ale until your guests have walked through the door. You don't want the fizz to go away. Pistachio Icebox Butter Cookies. We have a great recipe, and these are such a bright green, perfect for holiday cookies. So they came to me, and now I'm making them to send to others. Cream two sticks of butter with three quarters of cup of sugar until it's nice and fluffy and kind of a creamy yellow color. Add one egg, one large egg, and let that get incorporated. One teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of vanilla. Mm, it smells so good. And whisk two and a half cups plus two tablespoons of flour with a half a cup of the pistachios finely chopped. And do the chopping with a nice sharp cleaver or a sharp chef's knife. And on low, add the flour. It's a stiff dough because what we're doing, these are icebox cookies, and we're gonna make rolls out of them. Almost in. The last little bit can be just poured in. Done. So here's our dough. You can just take it out and you can knead the dough and form it into a rough log. And you want to divide this log in half. Now we're going to roll this into a snake, the width of the paper, and really compress it. And this gets rolled in an equal cylinder, the exact width of your parchment paper. And to make sure that it stays nice and rigid in your refrigerator while it chills, reuse 
one of your saved, and we save these always, your paper towel roll. Yeah. And the cookie fits right in here. This can go right on a cookie sheet and the roll will stay even and rigid. We have some already chilled overnight so that all the flavors really permeate the entire dough. So I've removed the cardboard from this dough. It is rigid, it can be sliced. Roll the dough now in glistening sanding sugar. This is a nice fine blend of sugar and it looks so beautiful. And then slice the cookies into Oh, approximately quarter inch slices. This little knife works very well. By the way, this dough can be kept in the freezer for up to one month. Arrange the cookies. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, they're just, they're almost prettier unbaked than baked. Have your oven preheated to 350 degrees and these will bake for about 15 to 20 minutes. My nut brittle is fast, it's easy, and it ships beautifully. Brittle is very easy. This one is a peanut brittle. Peanuts are a legume, they are not a nut. Put a half a cup of corn syrup in the bottom of a heavy bottomed saucepan. Add a quarter of a cup of cold water, one and a half cups of granulated sugar, a pinch of salt. Let the sugar melt in the liquid. You can see a little bit of crystallization around the edges of the pan. To avoid that, you can take a brush with water that kind of dissolves that sugar. The corn syrup keeps the brittle a little bit tender and the uh, addition at the very end of some baking soda uh, keeps the peanut brittle kind of light and airy. So the temperature is rapidly approaching 238 degrees. When it reaches that temperature, add your two and a half cups of peanuts and continue cooking until your caramel syrup is a nice amber color. I can now remove the thermometer. I wanna make sure every peanut is coated. Now add one teaspoon of high quality vanilla extract. Add your Last ingredient, one teaspoon of baking soda. See how it gets nice and foamy and creamy looking? Remove it from the heat and pour into your prepared pan. And this is what it looks like when it cools. It's substantial, it's heavy. And this little hammer is what's going to break that brittle into the perfect large pieces. One stick of butter melted in a heavy bottom pan. Add to the butter one cup of granulated sugar and some corn syrup, a quarter of a cup. Now this will come to a boil. The sugar will start to caramelize. All of this popcorn came from a heaping half cup of popcorn kernels. On this tray, I'm going to add about a cup of beautiful, salty, giant cashews. And on this one, I'm going to add salty, natural, mini peanuts. Anywhere between a half cup and a cup. Add one teaspoon of salt, that quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. So here we have perfect color. And swirl this around, mixing all that together. Pour half over one tray, half over the other. Now look how pretty this is. So just kind of drizzle it over. Have your oven preheated to 250 degrees. It's going to sit in the oven for 30 minutes and then you can bag it and send it. An elegant ice cream sundae that they can make themselves. And here is how I do it. I have two cups of heavy cream here, two tablespoons of confectioner's sugar and start beating on low. Then add, my favorite, two teaspoons of the best vanilla. And this now has a little pour spout that I really like. You don't have to unscrew the whole top. It's very easy and you don't lose the top while you're whipping your cream. If your bowl is chilled, your cream is cold, whipped cream takes just a few seconds to get to the right soft peak consistency. And here it is, it's all done. So now we have 
whipped cream and all our toppings and a lovely homemade vanilla ice cream. We have about two scoops of ice cream and I have a penchant for hot fudge. So, and if you put the hot fudge in a pitcher like this, it pours very neatly and nicely. And real hot fudge, if it doesn't solidify on that cold ice cream, just can't really be considered real hot fudge. A little sprinkling of salty caramel. And maybe a little chocolate stick, I like that. A dollop of that vanilla-infused whipped cream. Now, that's a sundae. This one that I'm gonna show you how to make has an unexpected twist or two. First, we make the custard for the filling for the pie. Start with three cups of whole milk. We're going to cook the milk with a special blend of spices, a cinnamon stick, a vanilla bean that you can cut open like this with the point of your knife and then scrape out the vanilla seeds. Put the seeds as well as the pod right in the milk. Don't leave any seeds on the board. A vanilla bean has so much flavor and scraping it like that really releases even more flavor. A nice piece of ginger. This is fresh peeled ginger. And four whole cloves and about 10 peppercorns, black peppercorns. Bring this mixture to a boil and reduce by half. And that's the beginning of our pumpkin pie custard. So the custard base has cooled, now strain. I'm using a fine sieve, it'll strain very nice and smooth. And you're ready to make the rest of the custard. These are your ingredients. Two eggs, whisk the eggs together with a 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree. Now, most pumpkin, by the way, in the United States is used for pumpkin pie. So mix the pumpkin. The eggs act as the thickener for uh, this mixture. Half a teaspoon of salt, three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, the cooled, flavorful, spicy custard. All of this goes right into the pumpkin. That looks beautiful. And pour this right into your pumpkin seed pat brise pre-baked crust. This is a beautiful, beautiful crust. And the difference from a regular pre-baked pie crust is that it has pumpkin seeds incorporated right into the dough. Get this right into a preheated uh, 425 degree oven and bake for 15 minutes. Then reduce the heat to 350 degrees and bake until the custard, this beautiful mixture, has uh, just set in the center. And that'll probably be about 25 minutes more. So this is our third little tip for an unusual pumpkin pie. Sift two tablespoons of granulated sugar, super fine sugar, over the entire top of the cooled pie, and then torch it. We're going to brulee it. Brulee is the French word for burned. As the sugar warms, it caramelizes. You can see each one of those little bubbles melting, really burning the sugar. It smells good. So just keep passing the flame over the surface of the sugar until the sugar melts and browns. I think we're pretty much done here. These gorgeous, thin, beautiful cookies are a long running family favorite. And this year, I think they'll be perfect as a dessert for a Christmas gathering. So these are very easy to make. One pound of butter, three cups of light brown sugar, and one cup of regular sugar. And cream the butter and sugar together. And then you add four large eggs into the creamed butter and sugar. These are farm fresh eggs. Add the eggs one at a time. right out of my hen house. 
right out of my hands. Look at that beautiful chocolate brown egg. And this really does loosen up the batter nicely. You want the eggs to be totally incorporated into the butter and sugar. And then two teaspoons of the best vanilla. Let that mix up while you sift three and a half cups of all-purpose flour with one and a half teaspoons of salt and two teaspoons of baking soda. That's another reason why the cookies are so nice and flat. There's no leavening agent in the cookies. And sifting is very easy when you use a wire whisk like this, mixing up all the dry ingredients. And then you can just add the flour while the machine is going at low speed. And when you get down to the bottom, you can sort of like ease the rest in. And the last thing, of course, that goes into your chocolate chip cookie batter, one and a half cups of best quality chocolate chips or chocolate bits. Like that, like that, and like that. Have your oven preheated to 375 degrees. And this amount makes about 30 delicious four inch cookies. And another little hint that we love to share with all of you is using a release ice cream scoop for the batter. You can just use a two ounce scoop. This will give you a four inch cookie and they bake in about 11 minutes. Bake right on a sill pat. And because these spread and because these are so large, I suggest baking three on a sheet. Now these go right into a 375 degree oven. If you're baking more than one sheet at a time in your oven, make sure that about after five minutes you rotate the cookie sheet. That'll ensure a nice evenly baked cookie. So let me show you how to make my favorite cookie, the chocolate molasses spice cookie. One stick of butter, a tablespoon of freshly grated ginger, very pungent, very delicious, and a half a cup of brown sugar. Cream this together. So while that's creaming, you can get your dry ingredients ready. One and a half cups of all-purpose flour, plus one tablespoon, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a quarter of a teaspoon of ground cloves, and one and a quarter teaspoons of ground ginger, and a little bit of nutmeg. And then just add one tablespoon of cocoa powder. So this is your dry ingredients. And now you can add your half a cup of molasses. Secret for dealing with molasses, if you spray your cup measure with a little bit of vegetable spray, the molasses generally just slides right out. So now add a little bit of the dry ingredients, about half, and one teaspoon of baking soda with one and a half teaspoons of boiling water. And add the rest of your dry ingredients. And now, oh, don't forget, seven ounces of semi-sweet chocolate, the best quality you can afford. Cut into kind of coarse chunks. And that's it. This should be chilled for an hour and then form the dough uh, after it's chilled in two balls. Roll them in sugar and then bake at 325 degrees for 15 minutes. But this is what comes out of the oven. Cookies that are utterly delicious. Now they have chunks of chocolate in them. They're nice and moist. Oh, they look so good. And I must tell you, the smell of fresh ginger just permeates the room. This is a delicious granola and one that I've been making for a long, long time. And I love to give it in a ball jar like this with a decorative fabric top. Um, I'll show you how to make it. It's really delicious. So in a bowl, put three cups of rolled oats and add to that one cup pecans, coarsely chopped, one cup of pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. These are very nutritious and very good in the granola. And one cup 
of organic coconut chips. These dried coconut chips really add a lot of flavor and a lot of texture to the granola. Now just stir this around a little bit. You can use your hands as I'm doing. A pinch of salt, about a quarter of a teaspoon. And if you are uh, watching your calories, or if you just want to cut out some of your sugar, you can use this Truvia baking blend. Use about half of what you would normally use for sugar. The recipe calls for a half a cup of sugar. Use a quarter of a cup of this blend. And also, we're going to add a half a cup of olive oil. And then, in addition to that, we're going to add three quarters of a cup of maple syrup. And that goes right into the granola. So now, make sure you stir this very well. And we're going to bake this in a 300 degree preheated oven for 45 minutes, turning it with a middle spoon every uh, 10 minutes or so, so you don't want it too brown. Well, the granola has uh, been roasted or toasted, and these are half pint jars, which are a nice single serving size. Now to make the jar really pretty for a gift, uh, cut yourself a round of decorative fabric. I save all scraps of fabrics for things just like this. Now this looks really cute. And hold the top with your finger like that. Once you put the ring over the top, hold down the top with your fingers and screw the ring around. Healthy granola from Martha. And just stick it on the jar. These candied walnuts, perfect halves of walnuts, are going to embellish a beautiful, delicious cake. Uh, I'll show you how to make the walnuts. You'll need two cups of walnut halves. Now, to make that beautiful caramelized glaze that's going to coat the walnuts, you'll need one cup of sugar in a heavy bottom saucepan with one half cup of water. And my rule is never to stir with anything, just swirl. Swirl and swirl until there's all the sugar is dissolved in the water. Put this over high heat. When it clears, it's gonna clear, uh, add a half a teaspoon of lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, and your walnut halves cover and cook until the mixture is caramelized. So once they are cooked, just drop them onto a silpat. These silpats are fantastic, and if you haven't used one, you should really um, get one because these are uh, nonstick. If you don't have one, you can use a uh, piece of aluminum foil that's been sprayed with a little bit of vegetable spray. And be very careful dealing with this hot caramel syrup. Uh, this is 300 degrees Fahrenheit. It will burn very badly, and uh, you should always have a bowl of iced water right nearby. If you get any of this on any appendage whatsoever, put it right into the iced water. And once they're cooled and you can pick them up with your fingers, just take the prettiest of the nuts and these will be your embellishments. And here we have our wonderful maple walnut cake with a wonderful maple and brown sugar frosting. Looks very good. And uh, decorate as you see fit but make sure you put a walnut for each slice of cake. Today we want to show you some of the clever techniques for decorating cutout cookies. So we're going to decorate some gingerbread. And we this have our- This is a royal icing? Yes. And Life is Sweet from Sweet Danny B. These are these wonderful, um, instead of using a pastry bag and tips, you just use these squeezable bottles, which really do- uh, It makes it feel just right. like drawing. It's so much easier to manage and much neater. And so I just outline the shape and fill. Okay, and then I'm gonna use a toothpick. Since these are smaller, I'm gonna use a toothpick to spread out my icing and also pop any air bubbles. Oh, I see, that's nice. And uh, should I sprinkle some, is this sparkly sugar? S sanding sugar. Oh, it I looks like so pretty. This. Yes. And I always give my cookie a shake, shake after I'm done. 
putting the icing down and that really evens it out. And also if you any air bubbles. Well if you're pop doing up, a large area shake. Exactly. Out. Yeah. Right. So I'm gonna add snaps. And notice I'm working on a piece of paper. You can work on a paper plate, on a piece of malleable paper, because then you can put the excess sugar right back into yes. the sugar. Yes, we always conserve our materials that way. Yes. It's a really fun project to do with your family or with the children. Now, these look really cute, Jenny, and so simple. But I like your other signature cookies, these beautiful red Santas. Yes. Now, uh, talk about embellishments a little bit, because people don't realize that, that you can just go to a candy store or to Absolutely. a cake decorating store and find really great embellishments. These little hearts, for example. Those hearts are my favorite. Oh. I mean, they are just candy icing hearts. And of course, we have some dragees here. And one of the newer things I've been using are candy beads, oh. and they're made with sugar, pure sugar. They come in all colors. Nice. And, um, and I love doing cookie trees at the holidays, and they look so beautiful on your feather tree that we have here. So oh, I just so bake nice. them with uh, holes. I use a straw to make the holes. Oh, okay, so before you bake, you make the hole and it, and it stays yes. during Yes, and then baking. I chill in the refrigerator and then bake it, and the hole stays. And this year, I'm making walnut shortbreads. It's a really tasty, kind of melt in your mouth. So in the bowl of your strong mixer, uh, you can add one stick of butter. That is a half a cup. And add a quarter of a cup, plus three tablespoons of confectioner's sugar. During holiday time, I just pour boxes of confectioner's sugar into a big jar like this. It makes it so much easier than trying to measure out of a box. And then just mix this until well combined. And just a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And then into the chopped walnuts, add one cup of all-purpose flour. You don't even have to sift it uh, because you're going to be mixing it up. You can just use a wire whisk for this or um, a spoon, and make sure your nuts are fresh. The nature of walnuts doesn't even change with a short time in the oven, roasted, toasted. They keep their nutrition, they're very, very good. We produce a lot of walnuts in California. And oh, by the way, butter yourself a um, tin like this. This is the best kind of tin to make shortbread in. It has a removable bottom, and butter it heavily. Once the butter and sugar is well mixed, scrape the bowl down once or twice. And just add your flour, little by little. Flour and nut mixture. And that's pretty much it. That's one shortbread. <laughs> now just put that right into your pan. And one way to do this very easily is to put a piece of plastic wrap on top and press with your the backs of your fingers like this. This will speed up the process. So you see it's nice and smooth and ready to chill. Put in the refrigerator for at least a half an hour. So once chilled, it's nice and firm. Remove the plastic. Preheat your oven now to 325 degrees. And I like to score this into eight pieces. So you can just put a ruler across the top like this and lightly score. Don't go all the way through, but with the point of a sharp knife. These are called petticoat tails. Kind of cute. That scoring allows you to break the shortbread when it comes out of the oven into even pieces. And now another kind of important thing to do is use the back of a of a skewer like this and just make some pretty marks in the shortbread. This is typical decoration for shortbread. There. So nice little holes, 325 until golden brown. And that's going to take about 45 minutes. And then let cool in the pan and release it. And it looks, when each wedge is removed, like that really crumbly and delicious. We all have recipes that have been passed down through our families that remind us of our holiday traditions over the years. I've collected some wonderful recipes from around the world. We have a delicious panettone, 
Sometimes I wrap it like this as a Christmas gift, or sometimes I just serve it right out of the baking paper. I love yeast breads, and one of my favorites is panettone. It's an Italian yeast at holiday bread with a distinctive cylindrical shape found in a variety of sizes. Let me start the sponge. The sponge is important in the creation of the taste and the lightness of the panettone. One third of a cup of warm whole milk, two packages of active dry yeast. So what we're doing is really kind of proofing the yeast, but also making a sponge because we're adding not only sugar and liquid, but also a little bit of flour. One tablespoon of granulated sugar and approximately a half a cup of flour. And I'm using my little trusted scale here, two ounces, a little less than a half a cup of flour. So add that to your bowl also. Stir that up a little bit and just let that ferment proof. And we can just put that right on the mixer. This has to sit for one hour. So to be sure that it doesn't dry out, either use a damp towel across the bowl or a piece of plastic wrap. The romantic account of Panettone's origins is that a nobleman fell in love with an impoverished baker's daughter and invented this bread for her. Depending upon the source, the nobleman dubbed it panettone, pandeton, which means in the local dialect, bread of luxury. Who knows? Anyway, it's a really delicious holiday bread, especially popular at Christmas time. Our sponge is ready. Now we continue with the rest of the recipe. We need 12 ounces of bread flour, which is approximately two and a half cups. And I am weighing this so that we are absolutely accurate. So here we just dump the flour in, three tablespoons more sugar, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. You can start mixing this up a little bit while you beat with a fork four large eggs. So this is a nice smooth dough into which butter is incorporated. Lots of butter, two and a half sticks. And now you can just pour the eggs in. You want a nice, smooth, stiff ball of dough before you add the butter. That takes about five minutes. Now it's time to add the butter, one tablespoon at a time. This is at room temperature, not melted, but at room temperature. Panettone's origins date way, way back to Milan during the Roman Empire, when ancient Romans sweetened leavened bread with honey. It wasn't until the early 20th century that panettone actually became widely adopted by Italians as their Christmas bread. So now add one half a teaspoon of orange extract. Get pure extracts, nothing artificial. And almond extract, the same amount, a half a teaspoon. They're very strong extracts, so you don't need a lot. And one cup of candied orange peel every single piece. And now your golden raisins, one and a quarter cups. I like a very fruit studded panettone. And I think we're done. Now it's time for the first rising. And it goes right into an oil bowl. Fragrant and really yummy. And now rather than putting this in a warm place to double in bulk, cover it and put it in the refrigerator overnight. So when I first started making panettone, I didn't have these wonderful French paper baking panettone holders. These are so nice and so perfect for baking panettone. But I used a brown paper sandwich bag. All you do is take the regular sandwich bag and roll down the edge until you get the appropriate height for your panettone. It does bake nice and round, and you don't even have to butter the bag. You just put this buttery dough right in the bag. It works very well. So now divide your dough. Look how beautiful it is. You can turn this out on your counter. Divide it in half and shape each half into a round. It's such a, a gorgeous dough. And just plop it right into the container. I'm going to make one in a paper bag. Now 
Now you can cover this with a towel or another piece of plastic wrap just so that the top doesn't dry out. Warm place for two hours until it's almost doubled in bulk. So here are two panettone that have risen up to the top of the papers. Brush with an egg glaze. This is just one egg beaten lightly with a fork. Don't press hard because it really is airy and you don't want to deflate what's taken two hours to rise. It depends on what you like, what you put on the tops. You can leave it plain, but I think it's greatly enhanced with what we call pearl sugar. And you can just sprinkle right into the egg glaze. This bakes into the surface and it adds a crunch to the top of the panettone. And you can also add a few almonds, which look very pretty. Get this right into a preheated 350 degree oven and bake until golden brown, about 50 minutes. So look at these, how beautiful they are. Two gorgeous almond studded panettone. Now uh, you want to cool these before you do anything else. And an easy way to cool them you pierce each side of the panettone with a bamboo skewer. And you're going to flip your panettone over and cool it between two jars. Panettone wants to cave in on itself when it comes out of the oven. So hanging it upside down for several hours prevents this. So insert your skewer and turn it over. You'll lose a few almonds, but Say lovey. There, just let it cool. Don't cut into them, don't be tempted. They're much, much better after they've cooled. Now, panettone does belong on a pedestal, don't you think? So serve it on a pedestal like that, still in its paper. I slice it right in the paper. And uh, I usually slice it in half and then in wedges, just like a cake. Or you can serve it in a much more informal manner on a breadboard like this. Whichever way you choose to serve it, panettone is so delicious that you'll be tempted to make it all year long, not just at Christmas time. Enjoy. Brendan Kennedy and Jim Cantiello are my friends. Good friends. And I'm very glad that you came by because this is a man's job. <laughs> Eggnog. Jim's going to do the egg yolks, 36 egg yolks. Now beat those really hard. Oh, goodness. And then you're going to beat the sugar, four and a half cups of super fine sugar into the egg yolks until it's creamy and yellow like a ribbon. Okay. Appropriate for but the now you need, uh oh don't spill. You need to use your wrist. <laughs> this is the hard part. Okay. Like okay. a machine and and see how long you're gonna last. Oh, you're it's like jigsaw easy. from the Saw movies. Uh, this is a meme. Yeah. <laughs> and this is wrist. Here watch, watch. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you. Oh. Oh. See? This too. Oh, okay. This. This. Okay. Okay? okay. Yeah, much better. Oh, Look. Oh, you so got helpful. the knack. And I'll pour the sugar in. All right, thanks. So 36 egg yolks. Yeah, Did okay. you say 36 egg yolks? 36. This is a rich is, punch. Uh, well, this is going to serve a lot of people. Right, OK. I mean, look how much milk and cream. Oh, yeah. And look at all the bourbon and cognac oh, and rum. <laughs> uh, it's kind of an evilly delicious yeah. Christmassy <laughs> treat. OK. Nothing I'm really, else. I'm happy I'm not driving home after this. Those have to be stiff. Egg whites. Okay. So is eggnog a tradition and was it a tradition in your house? Definitely. Really? Definitely. Yeah. Mom made the del delicious eggnog, not quite as complex or as strong as this one. <laughs> I just made this one up. Yeah. So what, your family didn't have eggnog? No, my, my family, my parents weren't huge drinkers growing up, so. I'm growing up, but what about now? Well, right now, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm making up for lost time, I'll put it that way. So my whipped cream is almost whipped. How's your egg whites? Uh, it's looking pretty Brandon's good. Brandon's learning that yeah. kitchen work is not, <laughs> not so easy. Yeah, it's nothing what I thought it would yeah, be. Yeah, like. well, it's hard. Now, that's starting to look creamy. Hold, now, pull it up, yeah. See, it's starting to make a ribbon. It's not quite. Keep going. Oh. You know, all that show and showing it up is not going to whisk it. You have to feel that there's no, oh, no, I still feel sugar. Oh, goodness. See, it's about getting 
getting that sugar. You have to use impeccably fresh eggs, guys. See yeah. these eggs? Right from the chicken coop that you walk by. Right? Wow. I live in Washington Heights. I don't know how fresh my eggs can get. And I don't know that I'd trust someone on the street just selling me fresh eggs. <laughs> no, you have to get them from me. Okay. If you're gonna okay. make, you or from the up. farmer down the street. Oh, look! Look, volume! That's good. Yeah. Okay. So this cream is getting thicker. Okay, now I'm gonna do something good for you. Oh. I'm gonna add a little milk. Oh, all right. Keep stirring, oh. keep whisking. So three quarts of milk. This is the base for the eggnog. This is what makes the eggnog so delicious. Did you milk this this morning? <laughs> yeah, this comes from my friend's cows up the road. Look, guys. Wow. Whip cream, now I don't wanna over whip it. If I over whip it, it'll turn to? Um, curds? I don't know. Butter! <laughs> butter. <laughs> butter. Butter. Is curd, butter. You never know making poutine. poutine. Your mom. This isn't the 1700s anymore, you know. <laughs> now comes the fun part. Nine cups of bourbon. Don't spill it. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, now we need one and a half bottles of cognac. Okay, I won't spill this time. Oh, this smells so good. Oh, that's yes. the Cavassia. <laughs> yes. Now. You know what that is, right? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Rappers love Cavassia. Oh, yes. yes. So. Your friend they Buster do. Rhymes had a whole song about oh. it. Oh, oh, oh he does? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, maybe we can get him to sing it one day. <laughs> How does it go? Pass, Pass the cavassier. Pass the cavassier. Okay. Okay. <laughs> one and a, a one and a half bottles. Oh my goodness. Yes. See, I'm telling you, I'm promising you delicious <laughs> stuff here. This is going to be quite the holiday party. It is. Right. And we're going to add one and a half cups of rum. Mm. Okay. So put that back there. Now see that? Mmm. That is good. Ooh. And now we add. How much more can you add? I mean, <laughs> what's the bowl? Is this the bowl? It's like the Stanley Cup. That's the, <laughs> it is the Stanley Cup. Okay, so now the heavy cream. Now this is going to go into the big silver Stanley Cup. <laughs> so bring the Stanley Cup over here. Oh my! Wow. And then this gets poured. This into is bigger the, than my entire apartment. Into by the, the way. Stanley Cup. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> the softly whipped cream gets dolloped in there. Oh, dolloped, okay. Mm -hmm. And then, yes. uh, before you serve this, you add the rest of the heavy cream. This okay, right yeah, put that in too. And we have another, that's only 18 egg whites. Wow. I didn't want it to really stress <laughs> Brendan out. Okay, and then this is the last thing that one must do, and that is to grate some fresh nutmeg. Oh, it smells so good. So would you like a taste? Absolutely. Yes, okay, this is a preview taste only. I'll give you a little egg noggin. A tray and a spoon and some monogram napkins. <laughs> All of this is Christmassy Christmassy. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, so here's to a very Merry Christmas and I love you guys helping me. This thing made it so easy. <laughs> we did all the work and sweated through it. Yeah, you sure did. Oh. Thank you. Well, tell me what you think. Whoa. Oh, it's actually super it's smooth. Super smooth. Yeah. yeah. Well, cheers. 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 Yeah, thank thank you. you.